Hi guys, this is Matt and I'm very very excited to show you how to run Demon Souls on PC at 4K and at 60fps or above if your hardware can handle it. My aim for this video is to provide you the best consistent experience which takes into account different hardware capabilities. Keyword consistent, not highest because for RPCS3, running at high frame rates alone does not always give you the best experience. More on that later. If you already have the RPCS3 emulator alongside the necessary patches for this game, just go straight ahead to the settings guide using the timestamps down below. But for those who are starting fresh and haven't downloaded the emulator yet, I will be sharing with you guys my entire RPCS3 folder which will be provided in a link I've shared down in the description below. This contains not just the emulator itself but all the updated patches for unlocking the frame rate, skipping the intro logos, and some of the mods necessary for improving the original and fixing some of the issues when running the game in higher resolutions. This folder will also contain my custom config file which has my optimized settings already set in place. So, if you don't want a boring explanation of why some of these settings matter, just download the files in the link and you can enjoy the game without watching this video, if your hardware is comparable to mine. Sadly, I will not be including the ISO file of the game itself, nor will I be showing you where and how to download one because it would be against piracy rules. So I'm very very sorry guys, I suggest that you find a disk copy of the game and just follow tutorial videos to help you generate an ISO file for your emulator. So after you have downloaded my custom RPCS3 folder, just place it on your desired location alongside the ISO file contents of Demon Souls. Then, just create a shortcut of the RPCS3 EXE, go to Properties and enable running the game as Administrator, open RPCS3, go to File, Boot Game, highlight the ISO folder of your game, then select Folder. This will now create the necessary cache files for the game and it will proceed to boot the game. You can now go ahead and enjoy the game at 4K 60fps. But if you want to know the context of why I chose those settings and how you can configure yours to fit with your hardware, then stop the emulator for now. You can enjoy the game later. As always, before we dive into the settings, let's establish our benchmark location first. Facing the gate in Boletarian Palace is one of the most demanding areas in the game. This is partly because of the amount of spawned enemies, the far draw distance, and the complexity of architecture that's rendered on screen. Using this worst case scenario means that when you finally reach your frame rate target in this area, you can be confident to assume that the rest of the game will only perform better. So, I recommend all of you to test your settings in this specific location and be sure to face the castle or else the point of benchmarking would be defeated. We can start by aiming to get the most FPS we can hit with our hardware. Right click on the game and select manage game patches. Make sure that unlock FPS is checked and if you want to skip the intro logos before the main menu for a faster startup, check skip intro videos. Then click save. Now right click and select change custom configuration. And since we're aiming for the highest possible frame rate, go to the advanced section, change V blank frequency to 120 Hz to raise our frame rate cap to 120 FPS. You can then check PPU LLVM pre-compilation if you want to avoid momentary hitches during gameplay but incur a slight delay during startup, at least in theory, because in practice, I don't really see any delay, thus I recommend you to check this box. Now let's go back to the CPU tab. Always choose LLVM compiler for your SPU decoder. I've already tested this out against the ASMJIT recompiler and LLVM has a 10 to 20 FPS advantage, so always select LLVM. For the additional settings, just leave them at default. Now for preferred SPU threads, I've found that changing values does not do anything different. Same goes with thread scheduler. My safest recommendation here is to leave them at auto and operating system respectively. Now in the GPU tab, 
always ensure that you are using Vulkan Renderer. And for this experiment, let's turn off Frame Limiter to output the maximum frames possible and leave the rest of its peer settings at Auto. For the additional settings, ensure right color buffers are checked or else the game will just display black. You've got no choice here. The middle section is the resolution part and you can see here a new option called FSR which is AMD's upscaling technique. And RPCS3 is the first emulator to support it. The game though is very light on any modern GPU so I can always recommend you to run the game at 4K. Upscaling would only be useful if you've got a very dated GPU and you've got no choice but to run the game below your native monitor resolution. If you're using a resolution higher than or equal to your native monitors, just leave this one unchecked. Sharpening is pretty much self-explanatory and it's just according to your preference. Fun fact, if you're on a 1440p monitor, the optimal super sampling resolution would not be 4K, but 5K, which would be 5120 by 2880 This is because 1440p is the perfect factor of 2880p, just like 1080p is the perfect factor of 4K. Very cool stuff. Now traditionally, increasing resolution is handled by the GPU and not the CPU. This means that for most games, if you see your GPU usage drop below 90%, increasing your resolution will affect your frame rate, except in RPCS3. For example, in my case, 720p performs similarly to 4K despite both having very low GPU usage. And just because I can still see a theoretical headroom for my GPU to be pushed even further doesn't mean that I can also increase resolution beyond 4K and expect the same performance. Notice how choosing 5K resolution has now decreased my frame rate even if my GPU usage hasn't been anywhere near 90% yet. This means that 4K is the best resolution for my configuration that balances graphics and performance. A sort of a sweet spot. So be sure to test out every resolution on your end until you see diminishing returns. Start from the original and slowly go up one by one up to 4K. So those are all the essential stuff we need. For the other tabs, just leave them at their default values. But what if you're still dropping below 60 FPS? Here is your other option. Go back to Manage Game Patches and select Disable Dynamic Exposure. This will give you a substantial performance increase across all gameplay situations. However, this comes at a huge visual cost as advanced lighting effects will now be disabled. This will return in the game looking bland and very very dark in some places. If you're already hitting 60 plus FPS, then I highly discourage you from using this patch. It's just not worth it. Only disable dynamic exposure if you just don't care about visuals at all and value frame rates over everything else. But does a higher frame rate translate to a better experience in RPCS3? Well, in terms of simple values, no. Higher FPS values in RPCS3 doesn't mean anything if your experience is not consistent. If you're familiar with the frame time graph, you should have noticed how erratic the graph was ever since we unlocked that frame rate at the very start of our settings guide. Notice how jagged these lines are and pay attention to the frame time values beside it. They're all fluctuating wildly because of the rapid updating of frame rates. What this means is that the time between the outputs of individual frames is messed up. In practice, this translates to a jittery and very weirdly paced motion of frames and is very noticeable when panning the camera around. Look at how inconsistent the camera moves horizontally. Sure, you've got 60 plus FPS, but what good can that be when what you're seeing here is a jumbled, erratic mess? That's why having a high frame rate alone is not enough. What you want is a high frame rate that would lead to a consistent frame time graph. This is usually not a problem for those with adaptive sync monitors since proper frame pacing is maintained despite variable frame rates, but sadly RPCS3 doesn't properly support it at times. 
This means we have to enforce a frame rate limit. Always use your lowest possible frame rate as the baseline for your FPS limit. This will ensure the most consistent experience. For my case, for example, even if I can hit a locked 120 FPS on certain areas, I still encounter regular dips down to the 70s and sometimes 60s. That's why I would have to set my FPS limit to 60. So now let's go back to our GPU tab and change frame limit. Now this is very, very important. Never use the off frame limit option when you're not benchmarking the game. Notice how I'm maintaining the target frame rate set in the V blank frequency, but my frame time is still fluctuating like crazy. Always use auto as your frame limit option and simply adjust V blank frequency to set your FPS limit. Now let's look at the magic of setting the frame limit option to auto. Wow. That is one clean frame time graph, a perfect straight line. This is how an optimal experience should look like. So if you're still dropping below 60 FPS, I highly advise you to just lock the game at 30 FPS. It may be 30 FPS, but what matters is a clean, consistent frame time. It just looks and feels pristine when you're playing the game. One last thing, I've also included some of the mods that are helpful in fixing and improving the game. Go back to my shared folder and go inside hashtag mods folder. The ones I've labeled with special characters on there are the two most essential ones. So I heavily recommend you to apply those to your game. In order to apply them, first open two separate windows, one for your mods folder and another for your Demon Souls ISO folder. And be sure that you're displaying the PS3 underscore game folder. Then simply go inside your chosen mod folder, enter the game region folder and drag and drop the PS3 game folder to your game ISO window. Simply select replace all files and that's it. Other mods on here are for UI cosmetic changes, changing to Xbox icons, removing some lighting effects, which I don't really recommend if you're aiming for atmosphere, and an HD font pack, which increases resolution of the fonts in the game. Now, this one is really debatable because while it does increase the font resolution, what you're getting in return is a very slow and long startup load time. For me, it's just not worth it, along with the other mods I've mentioned. So just stick to those two mods I've renamed with special characters, the remove gray outline and the unofficial patches. So that's it guys. I hope that you learned something from this video. Does my setting work for you? Were you able to use the MU folder I shared with you? Please do tell me your findings down in the comments. I'm far from an expert, so I really love sharing information with people. Keep enjoying the game guys and see you next time. Bye bye.